Hello everybody, it's SCD Matt Haven here today, and have you guys ever had a match that just made you have to stop, take a break, walk away for a little while? Well, I just had one. And I'm kind of happy about the tank it happened in. I've been looking to show you guys the machine for a long time. And honestly, they're bringing back contracts. It's nice to see, you know, you go over to season, mercenary contracts, kind of just a weird system that they're using to do it. But hey, they're bringing them back. Just little by little. First one was the needle. Um, I have absolutely no clue what the next couple are going to be. Now, the ammo load I like to take, 3240. I don't usually load high explosives inside this, but I'm pretty sure if you guys do, it would be a pretty good trade-off, depending on what you want to swap out for it. Um, I do like to take a healthy amount of premium rounds inside this, just because it is the machine. And there's moments you got to make sure that your penetration goes through that 310 base penetration. Now, the machine actually has... A Czechoslovakian gun combined with the Chieftain turret and the AMX 50B hull. So first things first, let's actually take a look at the AMX 50B 3D model here. Let's go live, take a look at the hull armor. No, not really the thickest hull in the slightest. This is versing its own gun. <clears throat> but as, as you guys can see right from the front, on the left and right of the cheeks up here in the front, they're going to be going right through you with standard rounds, depending on your angle. If you come up at the right angle, you can make that an auto ricochet. It is 50 millimeters. It cannot bounce 152s or higher, but anything below that will ricochet. So not much of a problem there. Now, the Czechoslovakian gun, on the other hand, um, console version has been reworked on absolute crap load. So I guess the first thing we can do. Sorry, I turned my head to the left because I got a screen here. And then, oh, what am I doing? French. There we go. TVP 50. Uh, starting off, I just want to take a look at shell velocities here. So with premium rounds, you got 900. With uh, standard rounds, you're looking at 1400. We could actually probably take a look inside the actual game here at the other statistics. So I guess this was just an honest-to-God waste of time. Now I feel dumb. Then again, we're all human. We all make mistakes, little by little. Now, the UK Chieftain, the, not the T95, the Chieftain Mark VI. Here we go. 3D model, live. The Chieftain's turret, this is the same turret that the machine has. Kind of, you know, it's a mix match. It's a mercenary tank. It's not supposed to be normal in the slightest. But up in the top here, there is a weak spot, depending on what's shooting you. You have a viewport here at 350. So against tank destroyers, against, you know, higher penetration rounds, they have a chance of going through. And with the rework and penetration on console, um, whenever 6.0 first got dropped, most heat rounds will be able to go right through that. Almost guaranteed. And, you know, it's a Chieftain. You got a hatch. You got 60 millimeters, 100 millimeters on your hatch. Not exactly the thickest hatch. So, um, sad face, I, I guess. A little bit of a sad face there. But other than that, let's actually take a look here at the module viewer. Fire chance, 15%. Power to weight, 20.48. Absolutely ridiculous for a heavy tank. Top speed, 40 point... Wait, that's all rotation, 40.85. Top speed, 70.35. Top reverse speed, 22.05. Now, the machine, this is one of those tanks that if you run, let's say, the traction system, it honestly, its speed governor inside the tank doesn't have enough horsepower to get it up to that extra top speed that you'd want. So if you guys do want to run some speed bonuses on this, the advanced power terrain is your best bet. It gives you the extra horsepower plus the top speed. And in today's replay, you're going to see why I prefer this over the uh, traction system. <clears throat> Depending if you want like haul traverse speed, but at 40, I don't really think you got to worry about your traverse speed too much. Horsepower, 1,200 and well, yeah, 1,200 base with the 5% bonus. We got the extra 60 on there. So a lot of the statistics on this. They're not accurate because we have it built up right now. Shell penetration, you're looking at 248, 310, soft terrain, medium terrain, and firm terrain, which, you know, you got hard, medium, soft, 1.2, 1.3, 2.1. Direct still concealment. It's a heavy tank. You just don't even worry about trying to make this thing concealed. If you're trying to be concealed, you're better off trying to stay behind bushes or drop below a ridge line. This thing's got a lot of mobility behind it to be able to get to those positions and just hide. Fire rate, on the other hand, 8.08. .08. Don't rely on it. 
use this thing as burst potential get in get out however the interclip reload 1.5 seconds shots per clip four reload time 25.65 you can get that down to about 22 to 23 seconds depending on your loadout and what you're planning on doing ammo capacity 72 really good ammo capacity combined with the top damage that the tank is going to be dealing with the 320 like 320 damage the 420 with the high explosives if you guys can make the high explosives work go at it on the other hand it's base view range only looking at 390 turret traverse speed 32 um honestly this tank this is one of those tanks that i'd rather see them debuff it a little bit uh view range i would like them to see them lower the view range down to about 380 which would give you about 443 for your view range not including the premium consumable because right now this tank is extremely powerful and it's really hard to go up against if you're going up against someone who knows how to handle their tank other than that dude you guys let's jump into this freaking replay but no joke it's just one of those matches that you get in you go and you just panic you just panic at, at the very beginning though it's just like any other match right off the bat you know i'm loading in i'm checking out the board i'm just like this looks pretty freaking good and i'll move off to the side if you guys want to see my team coming down we got a Rogetto, HMH 58, Iron Rain, Tiger 2, Enemy Team, we got a T54 Mod 1, IS-3, Turtle, um, two E75s of Valor, IS-7 that's not loaded in yet, he is loaded in though, IS-4. Honestly, they got a really good loadout on their team. So for me, it's going to be all about placement, going around, finding positions, locking them down, seeing where I need to go, helping out my team, where they're going to be needing the help. And one of my favorite spots to come over on Kassarun right here is actually between, let's say, F7, F6, and occasionally swapping over to D4, depending on where I'm needed if I'm in an autoloader. However, if I'm in a single fire tank, it's more like I like to go middle, I like to take far right, but for me, for some of my best matches, honestly, getting all the way over to F6, F5 area, f6 mostly is just it's a great spot to get to because you can lock down you can spot out and if you have enough armor you can pop over and take shots speaking of which coming up pretty freaking soon i like how my camera's like reversed i think a better way to do this would be all like hey there we go now we're looking at the game but for me it's it's all about taking your time there's a there's a lot of maps a lot of places that you can go a lot of stuff that you can handle really well and honestly dude if you guys ever get the chance to get the machine get it because this tank is absolutely a monster it is in my opinion one of the most overpowered tier 10 tanks in the game that you can get and it's just absolutely redonkulous the reload time the reload time is actually not that bad the intercrypt Interclip reload of 1.5 seconds. The burst potential it has, pulling out, taking your shots, combined with the Chieftain turret, the AMX 50B haul, top speed 70. And I mean, even right here, as I'm in the way, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove myself from this uh, scene to show you guys the top speed, so you guys can you know get a good look at the top speed. You know, right here we're, we're trying to go uphill. We're only averaging 40, and that's even with the extra horsepower that we have. So really the 10 percent top speed i don't see a real big point of that because even on flat land you're not going to be moving a whole lot you're not going to have crazy top speed to be able to get into the fights you're going to be just struggling a tad bit to try and get those placements and get everything put together so rather than 10 percent top speed go for the five percent because the five percent is going to be so much better because it gives you the extra horsepower to get up the hills quicker. While with just a 10% going up the hill, you, you might not be going 40. You might be going 35 instead of 40. So, all the way. Horsepower. If you can get that extra torque and horsepower, go for it. Depending on the tank, though, some tanks, you know, their speed governors aren't going to be really interrupting them too much. Which can allow you to get in a lot faster and move around a lot quicker. So, the extra 10% with the traction system could be a lot better to have on them. Uh, for an example, I would say the uh, Kriovets 1, the Roger Dodger. There's a couple of mediums to do really good with it, like the E50M. E50M doesn't need the 5.5. I actually prefer the traction system on the E50M. 
But right now I have the E50M set up for ramming. And uh, I'm trying my best to get a ramming video out, you guys. I really am. But I'm telling you now, I'm struggling. Because every single time I get into a freaking game, I never get the opportunity. Or at least I don't think I get the opportunity. Maybe I do, and I'm just not used to doing it anymore. But, you know, you always get caught out. And right here, as you, as you can see, I'm looking at the map and I'm thinking to myself, sure, we're dominating. But there's a real big problem. There's a lot of top tier tanks off to the far left. There's an IS-7 in the middle. There's an E-75 back there. There's a couple more problems. I, I want to relocate on the left side of the map because they're going to need my assistance on this left side. The enemies have pushed up way far. And as I'm looking at it, I know this match is dev we are definitely not in the lead at this point. We're going to be falling behind a little bit. And right there, we already lost a Progetto. Progetto just got knocked out. That was the same Progetto that was assisting me up on the ridge line, which honestly, great, great team. He helped me out a lot. The targets I was spotting out, he gave me some spot assist. He was helping out. Artillery was doing pretty good as well. And right there, we're going to put our fourth shell. We get shot from the right, which is something we don't want to take. But you know what? We ricocheted the IS-4. So let's go ahead and give the IS-4 a little bit of extra damage. Let's go ahead and ram them and finish them out. Because I'm not going to be able to go in a head-to-head -head match against the IS-4. I'd rather ram him, lose a little bit of health, and take control of the situation take him down out of the game only losing 100 hit points from that ram and now trying to focus on the object 430 we're going to put one shell and artillery finishes him off along with the iron ring putting around the tomb so right here taking a look at the distance knowing okay let's start the reload let's go ahead start pushing up now top speed go ahead take a look we're not even accelerating that fast even with the extra horsepower this is why the traction system is only good on specific tanks. I've been hearing people in game chat complain that they're not reaching their top speeds and it should be going this fast. But the thing is, World of Tanks is kind of like a simulator. You, you have a speed governor. You have a maximum cap on how fast you're allowed to go. Some tanks don't. Some tanks do. Uh, but there's a lot of them that do. So the extra horsepower, the extra top speed, the 5%, I know I'm focusing on that a lot, and it's because it's something that you guys do need to learn about. That way, whenever you're specking out your builds and you're working on your equipment, you know what to take, what to go over. <clears throat> Talking a lot. Got to clear my throat. You, but you know what to take and you know what to go over. It's like, that's what my job is here, to help you guys out, help you understand how the game works, mechanics, and everything else. I try my best. Believe me, I do. But I know that as of recent, I've been slacking off a lot, and I shouldn't be slacking off. But you know what? Wargaming is not exactly uh, the, the nicest crowd. So we're going to be taking some time out here, focusing on the M46. We're still living standards. We got one shell enemy damage. Second shell we completely missed, but the third shell flies true and hits the mark. Starting the reload, and as I said, it's already for the four. The heavy tanks that were up in the top right of the map, they were very well placed. And they were going to be extremely hard to take down. Our team was kind of rushing in. That's why I knew I needed to fall back and take over the left flank. Unless we wanted to get pincered and taken out. Now, it's then the 3 to 4. Well, technically 2 to 4 because we have an artillery. Artillery, however, on console, hits really hard. So I guess they can be considered a tank destroyer. That's really low health and no armor by this point depending if we can spot out targets at long range. And along with that, the um, E6, I believe that was the E6 that was behind me following me, manages to get a shot into the OE4, which is going to be helping us out later, just because OE4, 2,000 hit points is a lot of hit points, and with uh, 1,200 burst potential that the machine has, or the, what is it, the 1,380 burst potential this tank has, it's not going to be enough to take down that tank. We're going to have to put an entire clip into him, and then repeat the process multiple times. We're gonna have to do it twice, and then hope that we don't ricochet, hope that, you know, RNG plays a really big role inside those kind of matches and matchups. But with three versus four right now, and I'm I'm decently healthy, 1327, I kind of just wanna move around the map. I don't wanna expose myself out too much. And the T95 E6, I don't know what happened there. He drove off a cliff. cliff. He got himself killed. I'm pulling up, trying to take a pop shot. Really wanted to get the IS-7 out of the game. And I do believe I did just ricochet either the T-54 or the Valor. I want to say T-54. 
but knowing that I took a shot right there, I'm going to start my reload, and I'm just going to go straight to the back of the map. I'm swapping over to premium rounds, because the premium rounds, it's right now just basically me and the artillery, and that's all it really is. And by this point, my heart is pumping blood everywhere. My feet are cold, my hands are sweating, I'm going absolutely crazy, just wondering what to do, positions to take, where to go, you know, just in one of those situations that I just feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, extremely comfortable, because I know my tank. I know the machine. I know how to play the machine. And finally, we get to see the Valor, 927 hit points. I know that with three rounds, possibly three rounds, I might be able to take out the Valor. And with one round, I can take out the IS-7, almost guaranteed, depending on if I extremely low roll. However, with 6.0, low rolling is becoming the new norm, and I do not like that. I would rather see, you know, the 320 average rather than anything else. But primarily, single fire tanks with 320 alpha, they're basically hitting for an old high roll of a 90 millimeter with a 240 alpha. And for me, that kind of sucks because it just makes it a lot harder. You know, you look at the main damage of your tank, you think about your burst potential, and then you're only averaging a thousand damage throughout your four rounds that you fire. It does kind of suck. Now, thinking about relocating dead center, trying to get side shots on the IS-7, and immediately see the T-54. First round misses, I kind of regret making that ram, losing those 400 hit points from that ram. But at the same time, it, I just, you, you guys know how it goes. You get tunnel vision. Tunnel vision hits, and the first thing on your mind is just take him out as fast as you can. It does not matter how. However, if my health was lower, I probably would have hesitated to ram him and probably would have just waited to get the second round into him. But it is what it is. Now, right here, IS-7 pushed up. T-92 takes him out. I'm loaded. I'm ready to go. And I know that the Valor is pretty close. I have no idea how close the OE-4 is. OE-4, last time we saw him, was up at the top left of the map. So by this point, I'm thinking he's around H3. You know, around up there. But he's actually a lot closer than I thought. Artillery spots him out. So I'm thinking, can I try and get some shots into his side? And look at the map. I see the Valor's inside the city. So now, best thing that came to mind, I'm not even going to try. I'm going to slam my gas. I'm going to get out of there. I want to get to a position that I'm going to feel comfortable in and to where I know I have control. So with the speed of the machine, you're able to get to a lot of places really fast. And it's just nice knowing that I can move around the map freely. The Valor is not exactly the fastest tank out there right here, knowing that the OE-4 saw me taking a look behind me, trying to see where his gun's pointing. He was actually aiming a little bit to his right, coming around that, so my left, your guys' left. Now, waiting for the 10 seconds to click by, I would want to get unspotted. Second I'm unspotted, slam the gas. Just want to get out of the way. Spotting out the Valor. So, since I spotted the Valor and he didn't spot me, that means his crew's not exactly really well trained, and at this moment, I thought about that. Now, what I wanted to do is thinking about it. You know, it's always about those nice plays. By this time, I'm a little bit more comfortable. I know I'm in a good spot. I want to wait. I want to take some time. I'm thinking, how long is it going to take him to get stuck in the open? And to where I can now pull out and light him up freely. There's one. We bounce, hitting the turret, put the second round to the side of the turret. I'm not worried about the OE4. OE4 shoots the rock. Second round. Third round. And we low rolled three rounds. So he's down to 57 hit points. So now, it's time to run. So focusing out the Valor, the Valor is going to be the main target that I want to focus out. I want to take him down just because he's got the versatility. He's got the turret. He's got haul speed. He's got reload speed. He's got insanely good hash rounds. He's able to pull around, shoot me without a problem. While the OE4, a little bit limited. I would rather take on a big alpha gun with... No traverse speed, whatever, with the turret. <laughs> than taking on a Valor. Even though the Valor has 57 hit points, I would rather take out the Valor. Over the OE-4 right off the bat. Knowing that the OE-4 is on 1599 hit points left, I'm wondering where he's located. I'm thinking to myself, I need to move. I want to try and get more range. Who knows, I might be able to 
just get out out view range him this position right here not nothing much I could do I got three rounds I got one I got two panicking okay you know what we're gonna start the reload we're not gonna worry about that last shell we're gonna back up and make it seem like we we or we're not gonna play ring around the roses around this rock we got 10 seconds left in reload OE4 is in a really weird position. He's going to try and, you know, he's he's getting positioned to try and work around the rock. But we, we can drive down dead center of the rock. So right here, we're going to pull up dead center of the rock. He's now going to fall back, thinking about it. And right here, with the power to weight, the reverse speed, the terrain resistance of this tank has, we're now pulling back. We got shots on Dua's hatch. No problem there. Second round, ricochets. Third round, go ricochets. Ooh. Fourth round, we're just going to pull up and risk it for the biscuit. He fires a high explosive. By this point, I know his reload's going to beat mine. So I, I just want to rush him, get behind him. Right here, I'm getting worried. Is he going to start traversing around the rock and get full control? Nope. He's panicking just as much, and he drives forward. And honestly, one mistake that the enemy makes cost him the entire match. If he would have sat on that rock and just started to traverse around he would have been able to easily take me out of the game. But because he didn't, he is now out. I am still in, and I had one of the absolute best games inside my machine. This tank is absolutely phenomenal. Lost a lot of silver, 31,000. That's quite the loss. Mastery badge. Um, on the way to the second mark, top gun, still wall, high caliber, sniper, devastator. Honestly, Absolutely fantastic game inside the machine and really hard to beat a tank like this. The machine with its 100 millimeter, the penetration, the setup. Um, let's take a look at my commander real fast, just giving you guys an idea of what I'm running. So we're running six cents, rapid loading, born leader, firefighting. I don't know why, why I have. I have firefighting on this tank. I have not respect this crew since the launch of 6.0. I literally put this crew together and just left it on this tank. But the machine, it's pretty well known for being set on fire. Maybe firefighting is a good idea to have. Along with that, we have clutch braking, steady aim, track mechanic, situational awareness, and controlled impact. Controlled impact, really big part of the, about this tank. That's why I felt comfortable doing a couple of rams and getting those in. So we had two ram kills that game. That, that makes me a little bit happy that we had those ram kills. But you know what? Dude, you guys, machine, this thing ever comes out again. I seriously hope you guys take your time out to grind it, go nuts. And honestly, for everybody who got denied their machine, I know that there was a month left in that contract whenever they outright removed them from the game. And I'm sorry for your guys' loss and all the time you invested. Some people even spent money to boost them through it to get up to the kills and experience required rather than the first six stages. Um, other than that, dude, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I did. Honestly, I'm still kind of a little bit shaken up from that match. And if you want to catch me live over on Twitch, be my guest. I'm going to be live um, basically immediately after this uploads. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on ramming targets. And other than that, if you guys want to donate to the channel, um, there should be a little icon on my youtube keep in mind all donations to the channel is only for upgrading purposes giveaways and channel only it is not for personal use it is for the channel so until next time dude you guys have fun see you on the battlefield